the rarely used section four. All right. It looks like I covered viruses first, but let's talk about hackers first. All right. So, so packing was pretty common back when, uh, common for legitimate purposes back when you had, uh, you know, hard drive space as a premium, floppy disk space at a premium. Right? And so the point of packers is basically just you take some executable and you're going to want to compress down the code and the data and then you're going to tack a little bit of code on the front that says, you know, take this blob of compressed code and data and decompress it into the exact same locations in memory where it would have ended up if you just ran the uncompressed program. So make sure it decompresses and shows up the exact same in memory. But then, um, okay, I just lost my train of thought decompress it into memory, and then just go ahead and jump to the original entry point and let the thing run. Well, so that's notionally, it's not quite that simple in practice, right? Now we know all about all of the nitty gritty details that the OS performs at load time. And so a packer has to actually replicate these details in order to be able to jump back to the original program. So for instance, you can decompress the program into memory, but then it'll basically just look like a memory mapped copy of the original file, right? You don't have the OS loader filling in the import address table. You don't have the OS loader doing the relocations. And so this is the kind of thing that the packer has to do itself. It has to go and fix up anything, you know, if it decompressed into a random location, like let's say that ASLR is being used and it can't get the virtual memory address space that it wanted, then, you know, it has to now apply relocations. In order for this program to run, it has to have, you know, the import address table. Because this program that you're compressed and decompressing, it doesn't know anything about UPX or any other packer. It just thinks that it's going to be run like a normal executable loaded into memory. The OS will do whatever it has to do. And then the OS will call it at its entry point, And then it'll go ahead and start running, right? So packers are basically, this has been called, um, in the context of Linux, it's been called virtual exec or user space exec. Sorry, that's the correct term. If you Google for user space exec, you'll hear people talking about this notion of normally when you call the exec function on Linux, you're invoking a process. You call exec and then some process name. And then the OS handles all the things that's necessary to load that thing into memory, do relocations, do import address table stuff, things like that. When a packer is doing it itself, it's kind of like it has to do the OS's job that the OS would do with exec. So it's been called user space exec. And called Nebit Shuttle. That's a different paper that's still talking about the same thing. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just this unpacking program has to replicate the behavior of the operating system loader in order to make sure that it puts everything back in place the same way the OS loader would have put it. And then once it's done doing all that, all it has to do is jump to the original entry point of that code. And that's another thing you'll hear frequently mentioned in the context of malware analysis. You'll hear, you know, we're searching for the original entry point. We've got some malware. It's packed. It's compressed. What's the original entry point? And what they're saying there is they want to know what the decompressed program looked like and where code started in the original. And so there's this ambiguity. Where does the unpacking stop and the original code start, right? With things like UPX, it's nice and clear because when the unpacking code is done, you'll see this, like, direct <coughs> jump back into memory that UPX was just scribbling all over. UPX just decompressed this big blob to like right here, and then you see a jump to right there. And that's kind of a common um, notional way to, to have a sense when unpacking is done. If the packer wrote a bunch of data to some location and then jumped into that data, that's probably the original data and that's probably the transition point. But obviously they can make it quite a bit more sophisticated than just like writing a blob and jumping into it, right? So when people talk about original entry point, what they mean is address of entry point in the original file before it was compressed. Because when you compress it down, the file on disk is going to have the entry point for the unpacker code. And that'll start kicking off. It'll decompress the thing into memory. But what you really want is you want the exact point where the packer is done, it jumps to the original code, and the thing in memory right now looks just like the thing would have looked like in memory had the OS just loaded the original program. Now you can take that, dump it from memory, and uh, start doing static analysis on that. So that's one of the goals often with unpacking is find the original entry point, dump the thing once you see the jump to the original entry point, dump it from memory, 
and then you know you can reconstruct it on disk of like you know based on the header information which may or may not be in memory you can try to reconstruct it back to what the file would have looked like based on the memory dump. So anyways original context was it was originally used just to decompress because you didn't have enough file space and I should say that this technique of like compressing and then decompressing yourself once you get into memory it's still used commonly in embedded systems. If you go read the uh, talks on like Cisco iOS hacking and things like that, they talk about how you know iOS, the operating system for Cisco's, is you know it's compressed. It's got this image in the uh, in the null in the uh, I don't remember whether it's flash chips, but I think it's flash chips. Um, I think it's flash chips in the uh, in the routers themselves. And so you've got this EEPROM that holds the iOS image and then at runtime it loads itself up and it decompresses the, the operating system that runs on the router. Same thing for BIOS. You have the BIOS written into flash chips in the uh, system and it'll have some initial uh, bootstra uh, bootstrapping code. It's called the boot block where the boot block will kick off decompression of a bunch of subsequent uh, blocks of code and you'll decompress them into memory and invoke them. So whenever you have space at a premium you're going to see the same sort of expand into memory technique and it's still used on embedded systems where you have less space and uh, routers and BIOS and things like that. But on full on operating systems I just bought a three terabyte drive the other day for 140 bucks so space is not at a premium there's not really good reasons to be using packers on legitimate things the most common use for them these days is to explicitly obfuscate code. So because we take the original program, we compress it down, right? We've got the original program where an analyst like yourselves would be able to understand that, oh, I can look for the strings in the import names table and figure out, you know, what functions it's probably going to call. Well, if I take my import names table and all the rest of my data, compress it down and make it into a blob, and then I just tack on some unpacking code, now you're going to not really understand what was going on in that original thing until you run it and let it uh, decompress itself. All right, so at runtime, right, so this is the packing process. On disk, you get this compressed version. And at runtime, then the header information was updated to start at the unpacking code. And then the unpacking code just decompresses the information into memory. So the first thing is that it'll do is it'll sort of it'll map enough space so that the thing can be decompressed. So that's a common feature that you'll see the file data is going to be much smaller than the virtual size. So you're going to have a lot of virtual size for a small amount of file data because you've got compressed file data, but it's going to want to map it into memory compressed and then decompress it into memory. So you're going to need lots more space. You're going to need the equivalent amount of space as whatever the original file was, right? Because you need everything to just look exactly like the original file. So then you've got the compressed blob gets decompressed into memory so that everything looks the same way as it originally did. And then typically the unpacking code will still have to be even further beyond that. So it'll require even extra memory. The unpacking code still has to sit there running the unpacking loop. And then when the unpacking code is finally done in something like UPX, you'll have just a very simple jump back to it would have taken a copy of the address of entry point in the original code and it'll just jump back to that address of entry point as the original headers would have specified. And that's what we call the original entry point. 